okay good day to today's construction class we'll be looking into the we will be looking into the construction of an ellipse using the eccentricity method using the eccentricity method all right so i'm going to make use of the parameters on the screen right there that is the focus of our ellipse from the directories is what is 50 millimeters all right so the very first thing i'm going to do is this i'm going to produce this horizontal line then this vertical line perpendicular to it all right so this line here is my directories d d all right and we are told that the focal point yeah the focus of our ellipse from this directory is what is 50 mm so with my ruler from point m right here i'm measuring what 50 millimeters all right 50 millimeters so having that mark of 50 millimeters i'm going to what draw it vertically i'm going to draw it vertically that mark of what of 50 millimeters okay after drawing it vertically what is the next thing so we are told that the eccentricity of our ellipse is what is two third is two third and take note of this eccentricity of an ellipse is always less than one is always less than one so what are we going to do right now we are going to divide the distance between uh this point here and this is going to be our foci focus or our foci our foci point that's our point f so we divide the distance between point f to m into what into five equal apps because two plus three is what is five and since the distance between m and f is 50 so to divide it into five equal apps is what is going to be what 10 10 each 10 10 each okay so as you can see so these are the points from point f one two three four five okay haven't done that haven't done that what is the next procedure the next procedure is to locate our point p yeah and our point p is what is what is the vertex and based on the given question i told that our eccentricity that is the position of our vertex is what is less than one that is two third of the whole dimension so that implies that from point f i'm going to step up what two divisor two divisor from point f and that's going to be my what my point p so this f that is mark zero one and two so on this very point of point two here is my what is my point p so i'm going to denote this area as my what as my point p all right that's it all right so the next procedure is to denote my point one to start getting the curves of intersection for the ellipse itself so where do i uh, place my point one all right so towards the left hand side i already have my vertex which is what which is point p right here okay so i am to pick my point one at any convenient distance in between p and f so instead of me just picking any convenient distance so as to be on the safer side because of the calculations which you are still going to do so i'm going to advise you to place your m1 on point one right here okay so that is going to give you something like an even number so on this map of one here i'm going to place my point uh m1 right there so on that mark i'm going to draw what a vertical line okay draw it faintly as you can see on the screen so right here is my what is my point what my point one so to get the intersecting arc on point one what do we do we apply the formula we are going to apply this formula this is the formula it's going to be what m one times e okay and remember our e is what our e equals to two over three that's our e so what's our m1 right here distance between m to point one here is going to go that is going to be 40 all right so that signifies 40 times two over three okay 40 times two over three is going to be what by the time we approximate we are going to be having 26.67 okay we'll be having what 26.67 so with my compass picking radius 26.67 picking radius 26.67 at center f yeah which is our focal point okay so strike an arc on one here top and bottom yeah on that mark one right there okay that is it so 
Next thing is this. We are going to pick any convenient distance from on this mark M, you understand, on this line of M. So we pick a convenient distance from mark 1 to mark 2. But I will advise you, instead of you picking any convenient distance, just deduce an appropriate dimension so that you won't make mistake in the long run. So uh, for this reason, I'm going to make use of mark of 15, 15 mm each. Mark of 15, 15 mm. So with my compass, I'm measuring uh, 15 mm. Okay. So with mark 15 from point 1, I strike an arc in this manner. Okay. This is my point towards two from mark two a strike and arc that's my mark what theory from mark theory i strike and what an arc that's going to be my mark what mark four okay then from mark four a strike and arc that's going to be my what mark five from mark five i strike and arc that's going to be my mark what mark six from mark six i strike and arc that's going to be my mark what mark seven all right so then from mark seven i'm going to pick the distance between between one and p right here one p right here that's what i'm going to pick so with distance one p i place it on seven yeah to strike and arc and this area is my point what mark Q. okay that's my mark key so to get my second focal point here this f here is what focal point one so i'm going to pick distance from p to f1 right here okay distance between p to f1 right here place it on mark q here okay i'll strike it backwards here oh so this is my what this is my f2 this is my f2 so what does that imply that implies that uh we are going to divide them equally. This mark P and Q is my major axis, which are the vertex, all right? Why this mark of four? By the time I draw it vertically, it is going to what? be my what? Be my minor axis. So, but before I proceed, what am I going to do? On each of the divisors here, I'm going to draw a vertical line, okay? Okay, so with that same distance, yeah, the same radius that I place on F1 to strike an arc on Mark 1 here. Yeah. That same distance, I'm going to place it on F2 right here. Then strike an arc on what? On Mark 7. Okay? So that is set up. Alright? So to get the arc, yeah, the, to get the trace of our ellipse on Mark 2 here, yeah, on Mark 2 here. Yeah. So our M2 is going to be what? You know, distance between M to 1 is what is 40. Then between 1 to 2 years is what is 15. So M2 is going to be what? 40 plus 15, that's what? 55. So M2, for M2, this is it here. For M2, M2 equals to what? 55. While our E equals to what? 2 over 3. And the formula says what? M times E, which is what? 55 times 2 over 3. So the answer right here is... 36.67 if approximated. So with my compass, I am picking 36.67. All right. So with 36.67, right on my focal point one. Okay, right on my focal point one. So on the perpendicular line on mark two, I strike an arc at the top. I strike an arc at the bottom. All right. So with that same dimension on focal point two, on focal point two. All right, so on mark six here, on perpendicular line on mark six, I strike an arc at the top and at the bottom right there also. Okay, so applying the same principle, distance between M to 3, which is M3, is going to be what is 70. So for M3, that's going to be what for M3, our M3 is what 70, our E is just 2 over 3, and that's what 70 times 2 over 3. So the answer right here is what? 46.67. So with my compass, I measure 46.67. With 46.67 on mark F1. So on F1, I strike an arc on mark 3. 
top and what bottom then on f3 i strike an arc on what mark five bottom and way and what and top all right so then my distance from m to four f m4 is what is 85 m4 is what 85 e is what 2 over 3 so 85 times 2 over over 3 so the answer is what the answer is 56.67 so with your compass measure 56.67 all right so then on focal point one all right i strike and what an arc at the top then add the what at the bottom okay so i have the traces for my what for my ellipse so i'm going to pick my french curve or flexible curve then draw the ellipse passing through the vertex at both points p and what and q okay so that is the elliptical curve that is the elliptical curve take note of this i drew the curve through the point which my arc intersect the perpendicular lines all right that is the point at which i drew uh, the elliptical curve all right so back to the question the question says uh, we should draw a tangent and a normal to the ellipse at a point 75 millimeters away from the directories all right we all know what a tangent is a tangent is a straight line yeah touching uh, the circumference or touching uh, a curve or an arc at any point externally all right that is a tangent so based on this question we are told that at a point of what of 75 mm away from the directories so what does that imply that implies that this vertical line is our what is our directories so i am measuring 75 mm towards what towards this right hand side from my directories so this is my mark of what of 75 mm on that mark of 75 mm i'm going to what, produce an horizontal line okay which is this so after producing the horizontal line so this is the horizontal line for my work for my 75 mm and this is where it actually touches my ellipse right here okay so at that junction where it touches my ellipse i'm going to pick my ruler draw a line right here to the to the focus like this to my f1 in this manner okay i'm going to advise you to extend that line very well extend it very well okay then from this focus i'm going to draw a perpendicular line touching my directories so how do i draw that perpendicular line i'm just going to produce angle 90 degree on my focus right here which is this with my compass i'm producing angle 90 degrees okay so then i have my what i have my perpendicular which is this all right so that is it to my focus so i will denote this area as point uh point u okay where it touches it so then from where uh this line touches my directory say i'm going to extend it towards the tangential point right here okay to draw my words draw my tangent in this manner okay so that is our what that is our tangent so this line here is our, is our uh, tangent. So how do we produce our normal? How do we produce our normal? So on our tangent here, I'm going to denote it as point T. That's our tangent, this junction. So on our tangent, we produce a line perpendicular to the tangent. Yeah, your normal must be what you must be perpendicular to your tangent. Likewise, I'm producing another angle 90 degree on my tangent here with my compass. Okay. So, and that's it. So this line here is my what is my normal n n because if we check the angle from here to here and here to here is what is what is perpendicular to each other. Okay, so this is the solution to the question on the screen. Thank you.